Vice President Pence today on Meet the Press defended how the immigration travel ban was executed. The administration has been hit on all sides of this issue. Even Republicans who agree with the ban have criticized the president for the confusion that's followed. Then there's the legality of it. A federal court halted the ban. And then the morality argument as scenes of immigrants reuniting with their families are flashing across TV screens around the country. Joining me now to discuss is our political panel, Washington Post reporter Amber Phillips, Adrian Elrod, communications director for Correct the Record, who also was the director of strategic communications for Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign. And also with us here in the studio, conservative commentator Andy Sullivan, <coughs> founder and editor of Blue Collar Corner. Thank you all for being here. Amber, let's start with you. Attorneys general from 16 states now trying to block the president's ban. Did the administration anticipate this reaction? Uh, it doesn't look like it. I think they were hoping by issuing this this executive order travel ban so soon after he was inaugurated to put a really strong foot forward that they were tougher on terrorism, tougher on national security than the past White House. Uh, and now, as Donald Trump's series of tweets this weekend are indicating, uh, he feels very frustrated and very wronged by a court's decision to halt this ban in place. It is arguably backfiring backfiring on them to issue this travel ban so quickly and so chaotically after they he was inaugurated a few weeks ago. Andy, the rollout of this aside, let's talk about the substance of it. Is this immigration ban a legitimate ban? Uh, I believe it is and I think uh, I think the reason there was no good way to roll this out. I know everyone's saying that it shouldn't have been done this way. It's it's haphazard. But there's really no right way to do such a big, bold move. And this is the, the kind of things that Mr. Trump committed himself to in the first 100 days. So this was to be expected, I believe. There may not be a great way to do it, but, but clearly there was a lot of confusion. People could have been told or given a heads up on what to expect when they came to the country. Officials at airports clearly seemed to be struggling, especially that first day. Couldn't some of that have been avoided? Maybe, but you know, Donald Trump is not your typical politician. I really don't even consider him a politician at all. This is a very successful businessman who is aggressive, and sometimes he makes moves just to see what the other opponent's moves are. And then from there, he can work his program a little better. I think, it's, I think he's doing this with great insight. Well, this move certainly triggered a lot of protests. It Adrian, I'm wondering if the Democrats are organized enough to harness this energy and maybe ultimately overturn this ban. Well, you know, first of all, um, as you were just saying a while ago, that there is not necessarily uh, a right or a wrong way to uh, roll out a policy like this. There is a right way to do that. He is the president of the United States, and it is his responsibility to, to roll out, when he's, especially when he's putting forth policies that are very controversial, to do this in a responsible way. Um, but to your point about the left, I mean, what we're seeing now uh, is the left is more united than it's been in decades, perhaps ever. Uh, you're seeing so many different people from different organizations representing different interests coming together, standing together, helping their fellow neighbor um, you know, to, to, to come together and, uh, and, and express their uh, strong uh, concerns about these policies that he's injecting. And this will be something that we will carry forward to help us in 2018 and, of course, to help us significantly in 2020. Well, the president isn't just battling on the immigration front today. His comments about Putin in an interview with Fox News has raised a lot of eyebrows. Vice President Mike Pence defended the president on Meet the Press today. Take a listen. He was determined to go forward and, and see whether or not we might be able to start anew in a relationship with Russia. I mean, the president has said many times, if we got along with Russia better, that would be a good thing for the world. If we were able to work with Russia to hunt down and destroy ISIS and confront radical Islamic terrorism, that would be a good thing. And what you have in President Trump is someone who is not going to uh, look in the rearview mirror so much as looking out the windshield. You know, yeah, he's a bad guy, but we've done some bad things too. Are you comfortable with that moral equivalency? I, again, I don't accept that it's a moral equivalency. I really don't. Charlie. Do you think he misspoke? I, no. Adrian, President Trump has regularly defended Putin. Is there a sense in the administration that this is what it takes to improve relations with Russia, even if it upsets leaders here? 
Well, I mean, first of all, he can't even get along with his out with our longtime allies, Australia, Mexico being prime examples. Uh, but he consistently defends Putin and Russia in general. There are so many questions, so many an answered questions that we have about his relationship with Putin, which is exactly why we need an independent investigation to look into this. And Amber, you know, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi said she wanted to investigate the president's ties to Russia to figure out why he keeps saying nice things about Putin. Take a listen to this. I want to know what the Russians have on Donald Trump. I think we have to have an investigation by the FBI into his financial, personal, and political connections to Russia. Okay. And we want to see his tax returns so we can have truth in the relationship between Putin, whom he admires. Uh, uh, but I want to go back Trump. to the... The Democrats seem to be scrambling to battle President Trump on a number of issues. Are they organized enough to do it effectively? Well, it's unclear because you're absolutely right. Donald Trump presents them with, quite frankly, a lot of opportunities to try to go on the attack. Everything from not releasing his tax returns to saying nice things about Vladimir Putin uh, to this this travel ban that was rolled out in such a chaotic way. And I talked to Democratic operatives who say they're struggling to figure out which message to drive home on any given day. By the time you write a press release, say, uh, criticizing Donald Trump for something, or you go give an interview like Leader Pelosi did, or go on the Senate floor and give a speech, Donald Trump has already tweeted something else that's been controversial. So I think that Democrats are united in trying to oppose Donald Trump in whatever way they can. But how you do that with a clear, consistent message every day is difficult, made so, more so difficult by the fact that Donald Trump is just breaking all the norms and uh, taking up all the headlines. Andy, let's turn to you for a moment. You focus on blue collar issues and workers. Let's take a, a look at some of the things that President Trump has done in the last couple of weeks. First of all, he got rid of the rule mandating financial advisors work in the best interest of their clients. He reversed a cut to the FHA annual insurance premiums, making it more expensive for some first time homeowners. And he instituted a federal hiring freeze, many of which are middle class Americans. How does at least those particular actions resonate with that group of people? And has he done other things that make up for them? I'm going to tell you right now, everything you just said, any blue collar guy would not be able to make a connection to his present financial state. When Donald Trump comes over and says, OK, I'm going to lower corporate taxes and I'm going to relax regulations, to every guy who works with his hands and woman who works with their hands for a living and builds things and builds products and does services for the general public, I'm telling you right now, that to them means investment and job creation. And that's what we're about. So investment. they're hearing what they want to hear right now from this president. They're, they're hearing the things that, yes, they want to hear and that they can understand. Now you're talking about issues that they're going to go over the Johnny Lunch Pail and Sally Housecoat's head. Okay, they're not going to understand all of that. All of the intellectuals and the limousine liberals and everybody of that group, yeah, they're going to understand that. That's that's their homework. They're they're you know taught to learn about these points. But you got people getting up very early in the morning, coming home where the sun is already down, and you got both parents in the work workforce right now. They want to hear about money. They want to hear about investment and new jobs. Even if some of these issues will end up. It, and back it, Stephanie, it very well might. Yeah. But right now, this is what they consider paramount in their lives. All right. Amber Phillips, Adrian Elrod, and Andy Sullivan, thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Steph. Thank you.